next we have Tony Petrucia speaking about the Libby Squeeze Pools Project. Nice crowd. <clears throat> I know you can't see these, but I'll give you an opportunity later. Good evening, I'm Tony Patricia, and I would like to uh, thank the Chamber. It's an excellent opportunity for us to get together and uh, show you what we've, uh, what we've been working on. Just on a side note, I, I'm involved in another outfit called the Libby Outdoor Recreation Association, a consortium of a bunch of people, and the Chamber of Commerce in Miranda especially is key. They've done some excellent work there, and you may not know it, but there's a full trail system out there, and if you go to the chamber and say, I want to walk this trail, they'll, they'll pull up a detailed description of what you see, where you go, where's the trail hit. Excellent stuff she's got going there. So. Just keep that in mind. Okay, why am I here? Back to the swimming pool. I represent a uh, group, and I, for lack of a better term, we're the Concerned Citizens for a Pool in Libby. And we've been meeting for about a year. And we are, near as I can tell, I've talked to two or three other people, I think we're pool project number four. So we've a lot of things behind us, and what went wrong with the other ones, I'm not sure, but I have some ideas and some things, and we've talked to the, those people, and we've got some little better things going forward, so we'll see. We met for, like I said, about a year, and this group of concerned citizens, we came up with a pool that we thought, this is the pool for Libby, and it's kind of this option one pool, and they said, well, there you go, so we went out, and we looked at that, hired an architect and an engineer to give us some preliminary numbers, and they said, certainly for that pool, it'll cost you this much money. And we, we, were, we were gobsmacked, you know, that much money, really? So then we said, well, we better find out what the people of Libby want. So we went back to the uh, drawing board, and now we've developed three models, and later on you can look at these, but. Option one, two, and three, varying in prices. And so what we want to get is Libby community to say, yeah, we could get behind this pool. And so that's, that's what brings me here tonight is get you involved in the process of determining which of these models is the one for us. Where would it be? Uh, the location is to be determined, but I, somewhere down by City Hall back there, and there's some port property down there, there's some city property down there. That, that's a little premature. First, we want to decide what's it going to be, and then we'll work on the where is it going to be. So, today is the beginning of the public comment period. We're counting on the people in this room to get us a jump start. And you can go home and talk about it. Well, yeah, they got three options on there. We was, let's see which one it is. I like the one with, you know, so that, that's what we want to get out of here today is uh, help us select the best model for living. Now, just to, to go or done? At 31, then you turn to the question. <laughs> okay, so cost is a big, big deal. There's two kinds of money required, right? You gotta build it, then you gotta operate and maintain it. For building it, I think we can go with benefactors and donations and a fund the pool construction project like every community does. But the O&M, that's a tough one. And somewhere from 100,000 to $250,000 a year to uh, operate and maintain a pool. Half of that could be user fees, but the rest of it has to come from the taxpayer. And that's generally what causes the pool projects to fail, is they go out to a mill levy vote, and it gets voted down. And so 
why does it get voted down? That's the question, and that's the problem. That's what we have to solve, is that, is that O and M cost function. The costs we have today we can talk about, but they're really preliminary, and we'll have to get into the uh, more design, but before we can get too far, we've got to decide what one we're going to build, what model is for us. Okay, we're going to get closer to this, so tonight is the beginning, October the 22nd, mark your calendars, October the 22nd we're going to have an open house and we're going to invite the community, we'll have some public information campaign before that leading up, trying to get people to come to the meeting, the venue is TVD right now, we've got one, but we just have to book it. And so, we want to get some people to come and look at these options and, and get involved and say, well, yes, I want to have a four-lane swimming pool that's open all year round. I want to have a therapy pool where we can do water exercises. I don't want none of that. We can swim, swim in Libby Creek. <laughs> right, you ever hear that one? Oh. So, time's up. Questions? Any questions about this? So, Tony, you're saying that October 22nd, which I think is that a Thursday night? Yes. That's the first time the public can see as a collective community event in depth some more of the details and the challenges trying to put this puzzle together. That's great. On, on the 22nd, then come and talk to us about, well, I like this, but I don't like that. I like this, but I don't like that. That's that's really what we want on the 22nd is, is well, why did you vote down the last pool? Well, because it was just too much stuff. Okay, then we go down here to less stuff and, and, try, and try and get it more to what the community is interested in. Any other questions? Thank you, Keith. Got to be one more. Why is it the meeting at on the 22nd? Beg your pardon? Where is the meeting on the 22nd? I have to confirm it, but I think it's going to be at the school admin building. Okay, thank you. But we'll confirm that, and the public notices will identify that. Yes, ma'am. Is it a flat roof depicted in that picture? And on this picture over here, is it a flat roof? It is a sloped roof. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, sir? Well, uh, I think one of the things that needs to be brought up is that we wanted this to be a wellness pool. And to answer the <coughs> question, you can have a flat roof, the summit in Kalispell does, because a heated pool, you don't have a snow issue at all, at, at all, because of the heat in the pool. One thing I wanted to bring up is because I'm a part of this concerned citizens that want a pool, we want a wellness pool, and I, I just... I, I well, wellness is, is the key element there. Wellness is what you get in the warm water therapy pool, and, and, and for that health benefit of that, and workouts in the hot water and that stuff. Anything else? Okay, very good, thank you. So, actually, I'm kind of curious, how long have these specific plans existed like this is this fairly new or have you had this we for a little while got these from the engineer today and a guy met at happy's inn and picked him up and brought him here so it was designed by somebody like in Kalispell or we got uh, CTA architects in Kalispell they're the architects for it and then this comes out of a group called uh, councilman Hunsaker their pool okay. aquatic center designers so, so these are different. Po what, what is the primary difference between these options? Why are these the three different options? So this one, pretty much, the front end is the same, right? Yeah. Locker room, toilets, entryway. But the big difference is this has a swimming pool, which is uh, lap swimming, and it's 82 degrees. This is a therapy pool. Okay. So it would run in the 92 degrees right, temperature range. So then the next one, you, you eliminate that stuff and come down to a cheaper option. And then you just raise the temperature of the swimming pool to a therapy level, like 88 degrees. Okay. So if you're swimming laps, it's going to be a little warm. But if you're doing water exercises, 
resistance training, then it'll be tolerable. So and then this was outdoor cheap. Now, with that, as far as it, sort of the therapy aspects, um, and I haven't, like, for myself, sort of first thing that comes to mind is, you know, retirees and that kind of thing, but is it something for other people uh, uh, yes. dealing yeah. with other situations? Yeah, and there are, uh, what would you call them, uh, occupational therapy groups, there are uh, recovery therapy yeah. for injuries and all, all of that stuff. And, and they use, in fact, if we don't build this a therapy facility, then there's talk of a couple of therapy groups in town building their own separate therapy facility mm -hmm. for doing resistance exercises and all of that stuff. So is there something also that could be used, like, for instance, by the schools or for, like, like for swim team type activities or, or that kind of thing, or would this be more towards public health? It would. It would be to have a to have a sanctioned swim meet. You got to have six lanes. Okay. But you can have a swim meet, and you can have a swim team and practice and go to a place and set the state record there. But you couldn't set the state record here because. Okay. And so. Then part of the things that drives this is uh, the depth, five and a half feet is the minimum for a start blocks for a dive platform. Yeah. Three feet, three and a half feet is the minimum for an underwater kick turn. Okay. So incorporate that. Okay. So you can still do that and you can have a swim team and they could go to Kalispell and compete. They just wouldn't be able to host a competition here. You could, but it real. wouldn't be sanctioned. Okay. All right, cool. Well, yeah. thank you.